Chinese food is as American as apple pie. That phrase was made famous by Jenny Ate Lee and has been repeated many times since. So I shouldn't have been surprised when I moved to Crown Heights, Brooklyn, two years ago, and noticed that on every block was a Chinese takeout, a dingy one-room storefront with a light-up picture menu, pink laminate walls, the ever-present neon sign in the window, and a worker behind the counter waiting to take the order of the next person to walk in the door. Because I'm half Chinese and have many friends and family who are Chinese immigrants, I started to wonder about the people who make these places run. What are their lives like? So for the last few months, I've been walking into Chinese takeouts, showing up at employment agencies, and interviewing and photographing these workers. In America, Chinese food is something we all know and love. So whether it's beef and broccoli, General Tso's chicken. Or yellow fried rice and green plantains. Each of us has a special place in our hearts for a dish that is at once comforting and familiar. We love Chinese food so much that almost a third of us—that's 94 million Americans—have ordered Chinese takeout or eaten at a Chinese restaurant in the last month. And our appetites have helped the industry grow to more than 40,000 restaurants across the country, nearly three times the number of McDonald's franchises. But how often do we think about the people behind the counter, or in the kitchen, or on the delivery bike? We proudly proclaim the food they serve us is uniquely American, but do we view the workers themselves in the same light? More than 100,000 Chinese immigrants come to America each year. Some pay smugglers, also known as snakeheads, who send them crisscrossing the globe on boats, planes, and vans until they cross the border into the U.S. Sometimes concealed, sometimes with fake papers. The journey comes with many risks, and the hefty price tag of $50,000 or more, which usually takes several years to pay off. Kitchen workers typically work 12 hours a day, six days a week, seven days a week if they're running the business or in a hurry to pay off their debt. A cook can make eight to $11 an hour, which means on the low end they're earning less than New York State's minimum wage. Bringing in anywhere from $2,300 to $3,500 a month, the majority of their salary will go towards paying off debt and sending money to relatives back in China. When I've asked workers what a typical day in their life is like, most of them respond something like this: "I go to work, I leave work, the next day I do it all again." In fact, the lifestyle of a restaurant worker has become such an embedded part of immigrant life in America that a popular saying from Fujian. The province that most Chinese restaurant workers have originated from in the last 30 years is often used to capture this sentiment. Tangguan shi lu tou, hui jia shi zhen tou. The restaurant is my stove. Home is my pillow. There is undoubtedly a dark side to working in the Chinese takeout industry: long hours in a hot kitchen, little money for little, a lot of toil, isolation in a country where few people speak your language. I talked to nearly two dozen workers, and I realized that when I spoke to them in Mandarin, I inadvertently opened up a door that had previously been closed to them—a channel for learning what life is like in America for everyone else. They asked me all kinds of questions: What do you do for work? Have you ever been to China? What does your apartment look like? Do you have a boyfriend? Can you help me learn English? In turn, they also answered my questions. I heard stories from cooks who've endured the physical pain of standing in front of a wok for hours on end, delivery men who've been robbed and beaten, workers who haven't seen their families back home in more than 20 years. But for each bleak and depressing story I was told, I also heard one of hope and resilience. A waiter who won a settlement against his former boss for unpaid wages and is now a community organizer. A 20-something who's learned English and is studying at Brooklyn College, a delivery man who saved enough money to open his own takeout shop on the Upper East Side, which he and his wife now run to support their two sons. In fraught times throughout our history, we've often been faced with the question: What makes us American? Some say it's our insatiable ambition; others say hard work. Still, others believe it's our commitment to diversity. Out of one, many. 
But maybe it's just our belief in a simple idea that the next generation deserves better. Like many of us and our ancestors before us, Chinese restaurant workers come to America in search for a better life. Sometimes the reality they find here is more bitter than sweet. I asked one worker who goes by the adopted name O'Neill if coming to America had been worth it. He answered in a few words, "Yo fu chu, cai yo shuo huo." You've got to be willing to pay the price if you want to reap the rewards. Which raises the question: How would we live our lives differently if we thought less of ourselves and more about the legacy we leave behind? Most restaurant and takeout workers won't see their dreams come true in one generation, but if they're lucky, it could happen in two. Sacrifice, after all, is what the American dream is built on. It's also the reason I'm here today. More than a hundred years ago, a man in his 20s named Ji Qi Ward from Taishan, Guangdong, made the journey to America. He first worked as a houseboy for a wealthy family in Los Angeles, who gave him his American name, Sam Ward. Then he got married and started a family. Eventually, in 1942, he took over a restaurant in LA's Chinatown called Pearl River, where the menu boasted hamburgers alongside chop suey. That man was my great grandfather, and he was an American. Thank you.